Good evening everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. I have had many requests on how I do my stop motion for my shorts on YouTube here and on TikTok and on Instagram. So I am going to do a step-by-step -step guide today on how exactly I do that. I'm not gatekeeping, we're going to go through step-by-step -step and I'm going to teach you guys how to do it. It is a fairly simple process, the only thing is that you might need to download a couple of things in order to do it. And it is a bit of a lengthy process, but it is actually quite simple, so hopefully you guys can follow along and by the end of this you'll be an absolute pro in doing this and you can share it all across your social medias. This stop motion technique is basically as it sounds it is basically using stop motion. You're taking pictures of various scenes of your house and reintroducing all of the different objects to the house so that it then appears on the screen. The weird thing about this method is that you do actually build backwards so you start with your completed build and you go all the way back to basically the start of the build and then you edit it going the obviously the correct way which ends up with you having a finalized project. So go ahead and grab your room. I am going to be using a bog standard living room for this example and you can follow along with me if you would like or check out this whole video. I'm going to add the different time scales down in the description below as well as the two different things that I would recommend that you download for this technique. Step one is super simple. Head on over to twistedmexi.com and download their free cam build cam. This will allow free cam in the build mode. You'll want to add this to the your mods folder once you've downloaded it. Now for step two, we're going to be amending our camera properties. For this, find where your file is saved. Go to EA, The Sims 4, Game, Bin, Res, and then finally you're going to want to go to Video Camera. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you're going to see these three sections here. Make sure that you type easy in out. This is going to give you a super smooth transition between each of the scenes. For step three, you're going to need a screen recorder for your computer. I would recommend Streamlabs just because this is what I use. It's free and it's super simple to use. This is if you don't already have some kind of screen recording on your computer already. On to step four, we're going to be choosing our first scene. For this, remember that we're going backwards, so this scene will be your last scene in your film. So you can use tab in order to get yourself into free cam, use your mouse and your scroll wheel to get the best camera angle, and then press control five and that will save your first scene. For step five, we're going to be doing a super simple one. We're basically just doing our second scene. For this, pick one that's close by the original one, press tab, get in a good camera angle, and then press control six. Step six is to go through and delete everything in scene one in the reverse order that you would like them to appear in when you're actually doing the video. Moving on now to step seven, we're going to be recording the transitions between our second and first scene. To do that, hit record on your recording software, head back into the game. You're then going to want to press tab and bring up your second scene, which is going to be six. And then obviously we're going to be moving it into five. First, wait for it to fully load in. You don't want to do it too quickly. Obviously press six and then press five and then you can cancel your recording. For step eight, go ahead and try and find that video that you just took a screen recording of and you're going to want to name it something that reminds you of which scenes it's from. So I would recommend doing something like two to one. So it's scene two to one. Moving on to step nine now, we're going to be taking pictures of our scene. So what you're going to want to do is press obviously tab again and then press five for scene one. You're then going to press C on your keyboard and that's going to capture a picture. We're then going to come out of tab, press control Z to add an item in and then we're going to keep doing that until you've got a picture of every single item being in the scene. For step 10, we're going to edit all of those pictures together. I'm going to be using a free editing software available on Windows called ClipChamp. Upload your images. These are found in Documents, Electronic Arts, The Sims 4 and Screenshots. This is where when you press C, they all go there. Add each image in order from nothing in the scene to obviously it being filled with furniture. This might take a little bit of time, but I think it did definitely speed up the longer that I did this. After you've added all of these in order, slowly appearing in the scene, you can then go ahead and add editing to each of the insides of the images, these sort of like transitions. I normally just use a soft one so that they blend from one image to the next. This just makes the overall image look a little bit nicer as the items then blend into the actual picture. You can then go ahead and export that. From here, you're then going to want to repeat from step five for each scene that you're going to want to do in your house. So choose your third scene, press tab, press control seven, save the position for scene three, delete the objects from scene two, record the movement from scene three to scene two, obviously capture the items returning into scene two, you can edit them all together again and then continue it for scene four, five, six, etc. however many you want to do. Please note that you can only assign scenes using the buttons control five to nine on your keyboard, so once you've finished scene five, 
and therefore you're using nine on your keyboard, you'll need to go back to five again in order to assign new ones to it. It's a little bit confusing, but I think you should be able to pick it up after a while. You'll basically be reusing five, six, seven, eight, and nine keys, basically looping a background once you hit nine. So now I'm just basically doing it all for the rest of my builds here until we've got basically nothing else in the scene. It does take a while if you've got quite a big house, if you're doing like an entire house. But obviously I'm just doing a little room here and I basically ended it with just literally nothing down on the ground. Then finally onto step 11, we're going to be editing all of the scenes and transitions together. Upload them all onto your editing software and then obviously you're going to want to start from the beginning of your video. So this for me was obviously a plain plot of land and then obviously the final one was our completed room. If this is a house, this is the editing part that's going to take you a, probably quite a long time because you're going to have a lot of different transitions and a lot of different scenes. What I'm doing now is basically cutting off the start and the end of our transition because obviously it's going to record some random stuff around the outside while you're actually still recording that. Delete any of the bits that obviously isn't the actual transition and then it'll look so much smoother and obviously you want it to look as smooth as possible. Because we've used the tab and then obviously the numbers to create our scenes, there should be an absolutely flawless transition between the two where you've got your transition and obviously your scene where it's actually making the image. What you're definitely going to want to do though is actually mess around with the speeds of both your transitions and obviously the actual scenes itself. This is mainly because if I just left it as this now, the transitions would look fine, but the actual scenes themselves would actually be really slow and actually be a little bit boring to watch. I normally put them on about like 8 to 11.5 speed. Obviously, this will depend on your editing software as to what kind of speed it looks like. But I would definitely get recommend just kind of giving it a look and working out what looks best for you. Obviously, with things like YouTube Shorts as well, you're trying to keep shorts to a one minute sort of maximum. So you're going to want to also think about the speed in relation to that. You might have to have it quite high in order to meet that one minute if you've got, for example, an entire house, which can be a bit of a stretch. I went with 8.5 for this one because I figured that would look the best. This is quite a small like room and obviously normally I do houses and I think for the houses I normally do like 11.5. But what I'm finally going to do now is basically just add in a transition, which I'm just going to do a soft transition between each of these scenes. This will basically just, in case there are any like slight hiccups where I maybe move the camera a bit too quickly or anything like that, it basically just makes it extra smooth, make sure that it definitely looks super nice. I'm also going to lower the duration of the transition between them because one sometimes actually inhibits the actual transitions of the videos and can sometimes make it so objects really quickly burst into the imagery and it just doesn't look that great. But let's check out the final video now that we've finished. And then here is our final video. Obviously we've got all of the nice little transitions between them and we have each scene as it slowly builds up. But let me know if you have any questions about this in the comments below. If there's anything that you're getting stuck on, I can try to elaborate if I can do, but I will try my best to try and help you guys out. But let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below as well. Was this helpful? Would you like some more kind of longer tutorials such as this on my YouTube channel? Be sure to give this video a like as well if you found this useful. I know that this is definitely a fun thing to do and it's really good at for I think content getting out your builds and stuff as well on social medias. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as well. I post long content like this every week and I also try to post shorts as regularly as I can as well. And if you enjoyed this video that is another recommended video on the screen now so check that one out too and I hope you all have a fantastic evening.